Hey everybody, how you doing today? Uh, we're here to do a pressing, and I um, didn't find anybody to help me out, so if the camera moves around a bit, it's because it's my phone and it's on uh, kind of an interesting little uh, holder that's going to keep it in place. So, if you bear with me, I'm going to try to do this El Solo. Well, our guest of the day is Terrapin. Okay, Dark Blue Dream. Uh, I found it to be very, very dry, so my, my lovely wife got me a, uh, a real nice uh, vault here for it to get it all moistured up and ready to press. Uh, take them off. Take these out. Vita 62% and here is what we're pressing today this stuff looks and smells absolutely wonderful dark blue dream okay so I'm going to move this camera slightly so you can see what it is I'm doing hope that this works okay all right Try to make it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. Okay. Take a bag. I always turn them inside out. These are Nug Smasher 160, uh, 160 micron bags. I'm doing bottle tech style when I'm doing an eighth like this. What you want is a cylinder, as close to a cylinder as you can get. You fold the inside corners in on themselves, and it makes a nice little cylinder here. So, I look for a nice big piece to go in the bottom and hold down those, those corners for me. Make sure that it's spread out as evenly as possible around the inside because like I said we want this to collapse down into its footprint and a perfect cylinder to make a perfect round puck so I'm going to keep working on this stuff here hope everybody's having a really great day today um, kind of crappy outside here in Pittsburgh uh, but it's all going to be good I hope everybody will remember I am giving a class doing exactly what I'm doing now down at the Pennsylvania Medical Marijuana Education Center, 2112 Penn Avenue, on the 23rd, Saturday the 23rd, 7 to 8 p.m. I would really love to have a blowout there and get the press coming out to take a look at it. So the more people we can pack into that building, the better. I'm really looking forward to being able to give this first of its kind class in Pennsylvania history. There's never been a public demonstration of solventless extraction legally allowed until now. And I've been the one chosen to, uh, to give this class. I was uh, honored that um, Cresco uh, invited me to the education center to take care of this and, and spread the word about solventless extraction. Uh, in general and legalization in particular. Uh, while I'm doing this and prepping this bag, you see it's nice, it's, it's all set up for pressing. We're gonna just one last little bit, okay. So, uh, we'll get this, trim it off about a half inch above, okay. There's these little whiskers that sometimes hang on on the outside. I always get rid of those if I can. There we go. One last little. Make sure we got it packed in there pretty well. And we're going to fold in, fold in, fold in, and fold in like you would a Christmas present at the end. And here is our puck. Now. 
I'm going to move the camera again so you can get a real good look at the working end of this press. Get the light over there so you can see it. Um, so, get this out of the way. I have my paper pre cut, ready to go. Drop the plate. And does this thing get hot? 300 watts of heating power go into these plates. So even though it's 200 degrees, <laughs> it'll get you pretty bad if uh, you're not careful. Anyway, here we go, folks. Get our paper fit in there. Package inside. Get it set up just like that. Try to get it centered right as, as much as you can. Ah, there we go. So let us see what our press will do folks look at that see how pretty that is sitting in there now I'm gonna see if I can zoom in uh, okay I want you to really see if I can set this up the camera to, to catch it right you should be able to see a lot of the activity going on inside here as I close this press. I'm going to give this a nice long uh, preheat. Okay. So start bringing the pressure. Get the plates. I love this press. CRD. My boy Chaz out in California hand built this press for me. It's a 20 ton. Uh, it's heavy as all get out, but I'll tell you what, the capabilities of it are amazing. Uh, he did a hell of a job, and uh, I just want to give him a big shout out. Um, I'll tell you what, Pittsburgh is getting ready, or Pennsylvania in general is getting ready to have a transformation of its entire culture here with the possible legalization of adult use. Uh, everybody needs to be contacting your legislators and talking about passing HB 50. I mean it, become a pest, get on their case about it. If they're resistant to legalization, as some of our uh, legislators are, remind them who they work for. Their opinions, their personal feelings about marijuana are not an issue. They're there to do one thing, and you're there to remind them to do that one thing. Now, I'm going to stop right here, and I'm going to let this heat soak for a little bit. Okay. I'm, the nice thing about having a bigger press like this as opposed to the one I had before, is that I can afford to press it for longer at lower temperatures because I've got higher pressure working for me. I think it's going to really uh, produce some very nice rosin. Uh, this dark blue dream, I pressed it last year, and um, the, the results were a little disappointing because of the dryness. This is before I started putting Bavita packs and everything, and and started uh, realizing that, that the key to this whole thing is really the moisture content of the flower going in. So I'm really trying to make sure that that is not going to be a factor going forward here. Um, I'm trying to just keep everything as moist as possible so that that when I put the pressure and the heat on this, it turns to steam and it forces all of the good stuff out. Okay, so we're going to bring it down a little bit more here. And also, if any of you know anybody who is uh, affiliated with any of the local news stations, WPXI, KDKA, WTAE, or anybody who works at the city paper, the Pittsburgh City Paper, the Post Gazette, or any other local or regional news outlet, um, I'd really appreciate if you could let them know about the class that I'm giving on the 23rd because 
this is a really historic event in Pennsylvania. And nobody else is... Um, it's because of the subject matter, but this is a really important thing we ignore is uh, a, a crying shame. So do me a favor. If you know anybody who works for any of these stations, if you have any influence at all, please get them to cover this story on the 23rd. Have them bring a camera crew down and check out what we're doing because this is some historic stuff. And for them to not give it any coverage uh, at all is um, really kind of a shame. And I think that uh, with your help, folks, uh, we can make this event huge and help push forward HB 50 and the whole legalization uh, movement uh, in a big way. We're going to try to destigmatize and educate people at this class. Um, Soak in a little while. I'm gonna. So now you just bring it down in short stages. Okay. Uh, this press is uh, 20 tons, so it doesn't take a lot of force to uh, to really get the results that you're looking for. You don't want to overpress it. You won't get a blowout on your bag. Um, now I'm gonna try to see if I can get this right there. Trying to get that angle just right so you can see when this thing starts really producing. Um, okay. Just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Sorry for the crudeness of the video, but really, really trying to wing this on my own. Uh, if any of you would uh, could, would care to help me in any of the production of these, either helping me with camera work or helping me by bringing some flour to press. Uh, I'm limited as to what I can buy every month. Um, I'm on a fixed income. And uh, so I, I would love to put out videos every other day if I could, but I just don't have the money. So uh, if anybody likes what I'm doing and they want to support me, please go to my Patreon and support me in a monthly manner. And if you have any particular skills, if you are, are in school, in college for videography or anything like that, you want to uh, get some work in and get some uh, skills built, I'm more than happy to take on anybody who wants to help me out here. I'm kind of an older guy and trying to do this on my own is just a little too much sometimes, but we're going to get it happening here. Okay, so we're going to leave let that sit this day. We're going to bring it down a little bit more here. And very, very soon, we should start seeing some activity going on right along that edge that you see there, okay? Uh, like I said, it's, it's kind of hard to see sometimes, uh, especially on camera like this. But when I come and do my class, uh, there will be ample time for everybody to get a nice close look at the way this works. I'm going to bring it. That's right there. I'm going to let that sit and heat soak a little bit more. And I really think we're going to start seeing some, some stuff happen in here. Uh, let me readjust that light there. Um, there's also an event going on Saturday. This coming Saturday, there's a Valentine's uh, Day uh, cannabis-related mixer going on in Shadyside. Uh, you may want to check uh, Facebook for the announcement on that. I don't have it right in front of me. Uh, but that's going to be going on from 8 till uh, 11 or 12 uh, this Saturday. And I'm definitely going to be there uh, looking to network with some people and, and meet some new folks. And uh, anybody else who's interested in, in advancing the cause. So uh, I'm real excited to show up to this. And I hope to see everybody there who can. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to get that just a little more perfect. Okay, now I'm not sure how to get the camera there. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to take it through. Yeah, I'm pressing this at a lower temperature than I pressed most of the stuff I dealt with last year. Uh, this is 
really kind of a there's a learning curve with every new piece of equipment. So I'm really trying to uh, learn what the capabilities of this press are. And when I'm dealing with dispensary flour like this that costs me a lot of money, I tend to be more conservative about it because it is my money and I don't have very much of it. So now let's see. Okay. Let's see about the center. A little bit down here. Sorry about the, uh, crudeness of this, but I'm really trying to get this into where you can see all the activity as it starts. And there you go. See the bubbling going on at the edge there, right? And along this side, keep watching that. This is going to start cooking now. I'm going to give it one more tick. There we go. Starting to see it now. Because I'm doing it at a lower temperature, it's not going to come as quickly as it will if you were doing it at, say, uh, 215, 220, 230. Uh, some people are doing that. Uh, I like to keep the temperatures a little bit lower. I think that we're going to preserve more of the terpene profiles that way. I think that it's going to be a, a much better quality rosin that comes out of it uh, when you can do it like this. I'm going to try. Yeah, it's definitely starting to happen now. So give it just a little more pressure. Just a little more. As it cooks, you have to keep adding a little bit of pressure on it because it starts to reduce in volume, much like when you reduce a sauce down. So you constantly have this battle between maintaining your pressure and not over pressurizing your flour. Right now the pump handle is is slowly lowering itself under its own weight. I'm not doing that so I can observe what's going on in the work area. And like I said, it's it's not the easiest thing in the world to see. However, you do see definite activity. Uh, rosin is definitely starting to move out of the plant material and onto the collection paper. Um, so we're just going to let that sit there for, for a minute or two. And I'm constantly checking to make sure we're not getting any kind of blowout situation. The rosin is starting to come really nice now. Um, I think the color is going to be really good. Dark Blue Dream is not a particularly high THC strain. Um, this one's bringing in a 23.9 and last year when I did it, it was somewhere around 19 or 20 percent. Uh, I pressed flour that's quite a bit higher. However, Dark Blue Dream has a really amazing medicinal properties that I really like for me. Uh, and I love the taste of it. I think it, it's very, very smooth and I just, I, I like medicating it. So, if you see all the uh, the bubbling that's still going on, that's the important stuff that's happening, and that's what you've got to, to keep an eye out on. You don't want it to get dark. You don't. You want to catch it right at the end of that activity, just when it starts to slow down, like you would pull a, a bag of uh, microwave popcorn out when the popcorn kernel starts slowing down. But you see all that activity going on at the edge there on either side, that's still plenty of rosin that's being extracted. So I'm going to leave that there, let it do its thing. Sorry about it. I keep moving the camera, but I really am trying to get you guys a really good look at what's going on here. And see, some of this stuff auto butters as soon as it comes out, and it won't flow. It'll just sit right next to its escape area, just outside of the, the press bag. So you got to really be watching at what it's doing. Okay, it's still, see that? It's still, still extracting, still coming out at a pretty good pace. So I'm inclined to let this keep sitting there and doing its thing until I see all those, all those big bubbles 
once they slow down and look like they're going to stop, that's when I'm going to pull this. Or if I see the color start to darken significantly, I'm definitely going to pull it. Uh, because that's when you know that you've gotten to the best cut of your product. It's sort of like whiskey. Uh, you can do it at lower temperatures and you'll get less yield but higher quality. And the higher the temperature, the longer you leave it on the heat, generally speaking, you degrade the product. But the factor in a more powerful press gives you the ability to continue pressing for longer periods of time at lower temperatures without damaging the terpene profile of your product. So those are things that you learn through experience. I mean, anybody can take a hair straightening iron and a piece of parchment paper and make rosin. The reason people like me do what we do and we get paid for what we do is because we know just when to pull this stuff off so you get the maximum yield possible. See that activity? It's going on really, really well. I'm going to get this one more, one more pump right there. Okay. Bringing this down. Okay, now, now it's starting to slow down. There's activity still going on. There's still some bubbles. But we're starting to get to the end here because I don't want this to turn any darker than it already is. So I'm going to back this back out now. Okay. There we go. I'm going to give it one last gentle press. I'm going to prepare to take this off of the press. Paper to get it. It takes too hot, folks. It gets super hot. And it heats up the whole thing. So, we have gotten ourselves some nice rosin. Let's just see how much we got, shall we? that camera again we're right down on top Oops. sorry about that okay so let's see what we got and look at that we got ourselves some nice really nice here's a colored robin here is our puff and it's going to go in here with all its buddies. And by the time this canister is full, it'll be time to do a run for some edibles. So let's get this thing on the cooling plate. We'll give it a quick cool down here. We'll turn off the, the press and let it cool down because it does take a while. It's a lot of mass. Okay, here we go, folks. All right, let's start gathering this up. Let's see what we get. It's transferring off the paper really nice. It's not oily, it's not sugary up. Oh, yeah, that's nice and sticky. Sticking on itself like it's supposed to. All right. Sticks to itself after it gets has through its initial scrapes across the paper. And look what we have. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that nice? A little dark, a little darker, but then again, dark blue dream uh, always has been a little bit of a darker result. So let's let's figure out what we got for a yield, shall we? Now, terrapin, luckily, are $40 to $45 eights. So the amount of money spent, if I don't get an optimal yield out of it this go around, is not going to be the end of the world for me. It really pisses me off when I spend like 60 to 65 an eight for some top tier material and end up screwed because I got a terrible yield on it. 
Now, 0 0.239, 0 0.239, that is not a great yield, folks. However, every everything about this flower, thank you very much, I love you. Everything about this flower is uh, difficult. It is uh, very dry, and quality came out good. I mean, here it is. It's really, really nice. I'm going to transfer this to my silicone mat for curing. Get this on here. You get a chance to uh, flatten it out a little bit. Get to see if it's really getting quality to make sure there's no contamination going on. And look at that. Go. It's beautiful. It looks really nice. I think it's going to cure up really well. Um, has a very mild, mild odor to it. Uh, nothing particularly uh, spicy or dank about it. But uh, thank you everybody for joining me today uh, live on here. Um, probably going to be doing another video soon. Uh, before my class on the 23rd. Remember, come and see me down at the Pennsylvania Medical Marijuana Education Center at 2112 Penn Avenue in Pittsburgh on the 23rd from 7 to 8 p.m. Bring as many people as you can. If you know anybody in media or news, let them know about it. This is a historic event. You want to have a big crowd show.